I call the honourable the member for Grandler. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move the motion relating to financial assistance granted to local governments in the terms in which it appears on the notice paper. Madam Speaker, a sudden and significant change in government revenues can spell disaster for a government. That's something the previous Labor government for learned firsthand after 2009, when the worst global financial upheaval since the Great Depression slashed government revenues across the board. Such a funding difficulty is about to befall the local councils of this nation, courtesy of the Prime Minister's decision to freeze financial assistance grants for the next three years and make that change permanent. Many will be forced to slash spending on road maintenance and other services with implications for road safety, particularly in rural and regional areas. This financial assistance grants decision represents a $925 million hammer blow to financial positions of councils across the nation. While all councils are affected, those that will bear the greatest burden are small councils in rural and regional areas, which on some reports rely on financial assistance grants for up to half of their annual income. I move the motion before us today because I want those opposite to reconsider this foolish decision. I want those opposite to talk to the mayors and shire presidents in their electorates and hear firsthand about the impact of this cut. And I want to hear from those opposite, particularly from the nationals, whose constituents will be most affected, about how on earth they could possibly support this budget move. Before I go further, let me give you a real-life example that cuts to the heart of this issue. On June 16, the Mayor of Greater Geraldton, Ian Carpenter, told the ABC's AM program that he was worried about the effect of this decision on 15 small local government areas outside Geraldton. Mayor Carpenter said, and I quote, they'll become unsustainable. It's a very, very serious problem, and I can't stress that enough. To take away the indexation is just crazy. Just crazy, Mayor Carpenter said, and he was right. He couldn't be any clearer. And his comments are being echoed around the nation by mayors of all political colours. Councils now have three options, none of them attractive. Increased rates, slash services or increased borrowing. Increased rates will place further pressure on family budgets. A reduction in services is likely to occur in road services and maintenance in particular with real consequences, particularly in the bush. Last month's National Assembly, the Australian Local Government Association, was concerned enough to pass an urgent motion calling on the government to reverse its decision. These cuts are also coming at a time when the government is already hitting local government with other budget measures. The head of the Local Government Association of Queensland, Greg Hallam, noted after the budget that the change came with the reintroduction of indexation of fuel excise another move that will impact disproportionately on residents of rural and regional areas. Mr Hallam is right, but he left out another budget measure that will hurt councils. That is the Prime Minister's move to claw back funding for states and local government by ending its contribution of the cost of providing them rates, discounts to pensioners. So in fact is a triple whammy. Just as this Prime Minister is piling cut after cut upon Australian families in areas like health, education, pencils, pensions and childcare is also piling cut after cut onto councils. When you pile up the cumulative effect of all three, Where? it's clear the councils of Australia are paying a higher price than they should for this Prime Minister's political agenda. In Queensland, the Bundaberg Shire Council in the electorate of Hinkler has revealed that the decision on FAGs will turn what is expected to be a modest surplus this year into a $5 million deficit because of the decision to stop paying the money in advance. This comes on top of the fact that the Prime Minister also cut the money that was allocated to local government to every council area through the Regional Development Australia Fund yeah. when they came yeah. to office. It comes on top of the disbandment of the Urban Policy Forum, of the Australian Council of Local Government, of their abandonment of recognition uh, through the constitution of local government. Yes. They had the support of the then Shadow Minister Barnaby Joyce, but which the Liberal and National Party walked away from that bipartisanship prior to the last election. I'm asking this parliament to send the Prime Minister a very clear message on financial assistance grants. That message is think again. I commend the motion to the House. 
I thank the member for Grainler. Is there a seconder for the motion? I second the motion. Member Franklin, thank you.